Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and we're going to be trying to make this a fake solar eclipse image. Now this is an adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial done by the F64 Academy and I will include a link to this video so you can watch it if you want but also because there are some things that I've missed out near the end about tinting the clouds and what have you and if you want to see whether you can try and do that you may want to watch the video to get the idea on how to do that and the clouds I'm going to use this image here which I got from Pixabay and I'll include the link to this also in the description for this video so this is the second practice run I did on this. The first one I did was this one, although I don't need the words. Um, this one I used live filters for the blurring and it worked okay but when I exported it part of this sort of halo at the top and the bottom was sort of cut off. I don't, I couldn't work out how or why. Um, so I'm assuming it has something to do with the live filters and I have tried saving it again and it's been okay so quite what was happening when I was trying to save it um, I really don't know but I'm gonna refrain from using the live filters and just stick to the normal filters which will mean that you once you set them you won't have a sort of an option to go back and tinker with them but I think that is for the best just in case it doesn't work so well so let me close this down and we will start again so I'm going to start with a new project and we're going to make it 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels with a 300 DPI um, I'm going to stick with a transparent background because we're going to put a layer on and fill it anyway so once we have our project, um, we're just going to add a new layer, which is this icon down here, and then flood fill that with black. So just got the flood fill tool from over here, and select black to its color and just click somewhere in the middle there. There are other ways to fill layers and what have you, but for me I find that the quickest way to do it so once we have that there I'm going to add a layer a new layer above that with nothing on it and come to the elliptical marquee tool which is amongst all these other options here by default I think it's on rectangular but it's the elliptical one that we want and if you hold down the shift key when you do this it will stay sort of a perfect circle rather than an ellipse and you also would help if you have the feather set to zero which is just a sliding figure here so you'll get a sort of hard edge circle as opposed to a sort of gradient type circle so again like I said hold down the shift key and draw out your circle whichever size you want I'll go for about I'll do a slightly smaller one this time so once you have your ellipse now the only problem with the marquee tool is although you can move it because you've got this sort of cross in the middle you can sort of move this around you sort of don't really have a lot of control and if you wanted to resize it and alter it you couldn't so if you come to the move tool you get the bounding box here and you could resize this if you wanted if you don't think it's big enough you can hold down the control key when you click and move this and just make it a tad bigger or a tad smaller and also if you've got snapping on which is this magnet up here you can move this around until you get the red horizontal line and the green vertical line and then you know that is centered on the image um, you don't have to have it centered but that's just a little tip 
so we now have this selection here and I'm going to come back to the flood field tool and we're on this blank layer that we have highlighted and I'm going to fill the inside of that selection with white and now I can now press Control and D to lose that selection area you could also do it from select deselect but Control and D is the easiest way now we want another copy of this layer so you can press Control and J to duplicate or you can right click here and come down to duplicate and then we want to change this into a black circle now again you could do this by the shortcut key of Control and I or you can come to layer and invert as you can see it's Control and I or Command and I on a Mac if, if I, at any point I say control and something it will be command and something on a Mac so we now have the white circle below the black circle so I'm going to come to the move tool again and just highlight that top layer only and what I'm going to do is I find this easier one if you turn the snapping off and then two, if you zoom in, so you can see the top corner and the edge here. And what I'm going to do is come to the corner, hold down the control key, and just move or reduce the size of the black circle just so we have the white edge, a small white edge showing through. So again, holding down the control key and just dropping that down so we have a small white edge. If you have the snapping on, it can sort of, if you can try and have a small edge, it will keep trying to drag it back into position. So with the snapping off, it is easier, I find. So I'll press control and zero to bring this outwards. Let me just do that. So next I want to do is highlight the white circle underneath and I'm going to duplicate that again. So now we have two white circles and I will again highlight the bottom one and I'm going to add the blur filter like I said, you could use the live filters, which would be layers, new live filter, Gaussian blur. But like I said, I had problems with that. So I'm going to just go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to have this quite high. I'm going to have it up to around about the 80 pixel point, 70. 79 pixels that would do that would give you a nice sort of glow around the outside edge so click apply I'll then click on the white circle the second one that is above and again come to filters blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to reduce this down to around the 25% area 24.4 that's close enough so we have this sort of sort of gradual blur effect going on so again I'll click apply on that right next we're going to come to highlight the top layer and add a new layer above that and we want to come to the brush tool, paint brush tool, or you can press B on your keyboard to select that and come to the brushes now I'm going to come down to the drawing brushes 
and I think these are all the default ones that come with the program so hopefully everybody should have this one and I'm going to come down to the third one that is here which is number 43 or drawing free as it's actually called um, and select that now in theory you could use pretty much any non-solid brush um, because we're going to sort of streak this so if you want to use one of your own to get a different effect you're quite welcome to but I'm going to use this one and the color is going to be white now the size I'm going to go to about 250 in size and I'm going to click sort of randomly around the inside of this circle black circle but you can sort of also come close to the edge the ones in the middle may not get used but it doesn't hurt to have a few in there and let's just leave it at that so I've got a, a random amount of, of these splodges then I want to come up to filters blur and zoom blur and have it at the maximum of 100 pixels so you start to get this sort of streaking effect so click apply and then wait for that to do its thing and then come up to filters again and you should already have this here it's repeat zoom blur if you don't have that just go back down to blur zoom blur but it's just as easy to click on repeat zoom blur wait for it to do its thing again so we make them streak even further and you can do it an, uh, once more just to streak them just that bit more Let me come off this tall second so we have some streaks and some of them because they were close to the edge they're already coming off of the halo but we're going to move them around a bit in a minute so what I want to do now is click on this icon in this layer and I'm going to click and drag it down so it comes between the black circle and the top white circle and when you have it right the blue line should go all the way across this area here not just to the icon if, you, if it only goes as far as the icon you're making it a child of the black layer but we want it to be in between the black and the white layer so I'll drag this down so that is now between those two circles and as you can see there are some streaks just starting to pop out around the edges here and to get even more of them we're going to come to the mesh warp tool which is this tool down here and this will put a white lined box around the outside with nodes in each corner and you can just click and drag out the edges of this to stretch and maneuver the layer in certain ways you can also add extra lines going across by double clicking on the edge so for example I could double click here and it would put a horizontal line here and I could click and drag out some of those streaks here and maybe some of those on the other side or you could just click on the line and drag a few out here and there and how many you drag out because you've also got these handles sometimes it will appear that you can used to drag out a bit extra so yes and once you're happy with however many streaks you've got coming out click apply now you could if you want to is an optional thing here you could right click that layer and duplicate it which one will make those streaks a little bit uh, more prominent or you could come to the move tool and if you come to one of the corner edges you could 
rotate them slightly just to sort of help blur them and maybe even again come back to the mesh warp tool and bring out and warp this layer slightly more than you did the other one so you're not restricting yourself to just the one layer but that is an option whether you want to go with one or two layers but once you're happy again click apply if you've reused the mesh warp tool you could also lower the opacity of maybe that layer so its effect is slightly less I'm going to reduce this one to say 50% so we've got the basis for the um, solar eclipse already there so next I want to come to the top layer highlight that and add yet another new layer and I'm going to come back to the paintbrush tool and I'm going to change the brush back to a basic brush and a basic soft edge brush let's go with that one there and I'm going to make the size about 1200 just make sure that I'm on white yes I am and I'm going to you can you know, put it whichever side you want but I'm going to go with the right hand side here and just sort of have that sun glow extra glow coming about there so again I'm going to come to the mesh warp tool and I'm just going to tinker with how that looks Let's stretch it a bit that way a bit that way and maybe squeeze it in a bit like that and let's just bring this in a little bit more that way yes I'm happy with that so click apply so we now sort of pretty much have the eclipse and you could save this and export it under a new name as it stands at the moment or we can add some clouds let me just um, see if I can find which one it is called I think it's that one yes because this is size wise it is pretty much the same size 6000 by 4000 so I won't have to sort of alter anything so I'm just going to right click on that copy come back to our image and then edit and paste so as you can see it's pretty much filled that area so I don't have to resize but if you're using your own images you, know, you might need to resize it and move it around accordingly so I'm going to lower the opacity of this down to about 40% do 39% and then I'm going to click on the cog which is next to where it says normal which is the blending range for the layer that's highlighted which is this cloud layer now there's no sort of hard and fast rule as to where you place these things uh, these settings because one it would depend on your image two on what is you're trying to achieve um, but it's mainly down to which cloud image you picked and how you want you know how it will work but we're going to start with the source layer ranges and I'm going to drop down the left hand node right down to the bottom so as you can see we've already lost quite a lot of the cloud so it's a much subtler effect and I'm going to click in the middle here and I'm going to drop this down I mean I could come all the way down to the bottom here maybe let's try over to the the first line there and then I'm going to click another one 
roughly in the middle here and let's try about so I think every time I've done this it looks slightly different depends on how much of the cloud you want oh, I'll try it there I'll see how that looks so I've got the two extra nodes and I've dragged this right down to the bottom and this one onto the middle line horizontally and on the one from last line vertically now I don't think altering the underlying thing will have too much of a beneficial effect but you could tinker with that as well um, depends on how much of that cloud you want to show through let's try that about there so I've just moved it from the top left and I've just moved it over to the horizontal middle and the first vertical line so I'm fairly happy with that so I can close that down now I can also you know, tinker again with the opacity and see how much of that cloud you want to be showing through but I'm going to keep this on about just under the 40% range now if you want the clouds over the moon you can do but if you don't come to the erase brush it's a bit big and I'll just reduce the hardness down and just erase those clouds from the moon area it doesn't matter if you go over a little bit into the white area because you're not going to see those clouds in the white area anyway so here we go we've got a nice clear moon area so next I want to add a curves adjustment so I'll come to this half black and white circle here and come to curves let me come off this tool now at the moment if I make any adjustments to this it's going to affect the whole image but I just want it to affect the clouds image so this time I will be dragging this layer down and making it a child of the cloud image so this time I want the blue line just to come over to the start of the icon for the cloud layer so I'll drag that down and once I've got that blue line I'll let go so that is now a child of the cloud layer and it will only affect the cloud layer so then it's just a case of making alterations to your personal taste again there's nothing I can sort of say here about how to move it and how you want it to look because that all depends on what you are trying to achieve because um, basically you just want for me personally I think you just want a hint of that sort of cloudy sky yes I'm quite happy with that so I'll just close that now you could again you could duplicate that whole group maybe and make the clouds a bit darker and change the blend modes or the opacity to alter but I'm not going to do that I'm sort of fairly happy with how that looks um, and it is at this point in the Photoshop tutorial where he he starts adding gradients to the cloud group so there's sort of subtle colors in the clouds now I've I personally tried that and I couldn't get it to work how what I thought looked that good I also tried the recolor adjustment I also tried um, 
Oh, what's the other one? I can't remember. Um, but I tried various options to sort of get a bit of colour into those clouds and I didn't like how it looked so I'm not going to add them. So for me this tutorial has finished. It's just a case of saving this under a new name and that is it. But if you want to sort of try and take it a bit further to add a bit of colour into the clouds I will leave that up to you. I would like to suggest you have a look at the Photoshop tutorial see how he did it and see whether you think you could incorporate that so that is everything so thank you for watching and goodbye